So I could talk for a really long time about this, so I'm going to try and make it short, only five minutes, but if I run over, um, just bear with me. Um, I actually have gone to the March for Life twice. I went last year and the year before that when I was 14, and both were very different experiences. Um, but they were both really powerful and really life-changing. Um, so my first experience for the March for Life, um, I was 14 years old, and my whole family went except for my little sister. And it was really nice to be with our whole family because the family is the basis of all uh, life. And so we left really early one morning, in the middle of January, and um, we drove through the night and we stopped for mass the next morning in Pennsylvania, in the middle of this little town. And they're waiting for us to be to come and we all send mass together and it was a very nice precursor to the battle that we were going to be facing the next day. Um, so later that day, we got to the hotel and we immediately went to the Basilica because there was the Respect Life Mass that evening. And uh, we got there and just imagine this Basilica, it's probably like three, four times the size of this cathedral. And it's filled with people. All the aisles are filled with people, all the pews. If you wanted to even get a pew seat, you had to be there four, five hours earlier. And then there's a whole basement full of chapels and stuff full of people that had TVs so you could watch what was going on upstairs. And it was amazing because it was all different ages and we're all saying the same mass for the same reason and we're all there. Um, and then right after that we went back to the hotel and there's a rally uh, that was called the Stand True Rally. And at the rally there was a lot of different talks, um, a lot of different organizations came and they were talking like the 40 Days for Life, uh, the live action where they go into Planned Parenthoods and they uh, reveal all the horrifying facts about it. And Nellie Gray, who was the original founder of the March for Life, spoke, and that was only a year before her death. And um, it was very interesting though, because in the middle of the rally, we were, just got done with a talk, uh, and all of a sudden these people stood up in the middle of the rally and they were chanting pro-choice pro uh, chants and very offensive, holding signs. And it was really scary at first because everybody there was, we thought everybody was there pro-life. And then we had this new um, against us. And there was, um, but immediately we started praying, all of us, we started praying that our Father and it was, really amazing because not everybody there was Catholic and we all knew that our father and we could all pray it together and eventually the people were escorted out and it was very powerful because we were all united against the same cause and we knew that prayer was so much more powerful than um, doing these acts that were a lot more um, not as kind and so the next morning we got up early and we went to the Verizon Center where there's another rally this is more of a youth rally. And the Verizon Center is a hockey arena. And it's the only sports that are played there, concerts. And except for one day of the year, there's a huge mass. And Jesus is brought into this hockey arena and is all full of youth, Catholic youth. And we're all praying the rosary, singing. And it was amazing because when you're there, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. And there's so many people out there that feel the same way, just like us, and are doing the right thing. Um, <clears throat> and right after the Verizon rally, we just started marching right away. We were all so full of energy, ready to go do this, and we just marched right out the doors, and we just start marching right up to the Supreme Court. And they were singing chants like, um, Hey Obama, your mama chose life, and I love babies, how about you? And then like another group of people would yell, um, I love babies, how about you? And we just go back and forth and we do the same thing for like, I love mommies, and it was really, really cool. And you look out, like if you get to the top of a hill, you look out and there's just a flood of people. Like you cannot see the end of the line, and you can't see the beginning, and 
it's amazing because there's 500,000 people there or more and they're all there for the same reason. There's different people from all across the country, different faiths. There's even like atheists for life, but it's cool because they recognize um, that it's still a life. And then there's the Catholics and then there's the Protestants and we're all there for the same reason. Uh, there's, you know, it's kind of scary because when you're walking, um, you can see there's, they have billboards of the of a, pictures of aborted babies, and that was really, I'd never really seen pictures like that before, and so it was really horrific, and, but it was like, oh my goodness, this is abortion, and for anybody who passes by there, it just brings that revelation. Um, so we marched all the way up to the Supreme Court, and there's a lot of witnesses, like the I will never be silent um, women who've had abortions, and same with men. And um, there's so many there. And it's truly amazing because people who, the women and men who speak out about their own um, bad decision and how it has affected them in a bad way will change America. And there's a small pro-choice rally there trying to show us, but there's so 500,000 people there, and we're all there, and it was amazing. Uh, the next day, there's a lot of touring, and it was very interesting because when you go around, you see all these historic places, and it's so obvious that our founding fathers meant for life to be protected um, for the unborn throughout all of the historic documents, many of our presidents, uh, when we went to Abraham Lincoln's monument, that was, you know, you just walk in there and you like feel like his affirmation of what we were doing. And that evening we drove back to Marquette, took the long trek, um, or actually we stopped at the seminary down in Ann Arbor and or in Detroit area. And it was nice because we had to have a hot meal and then we sit, said, um, like the divine office in the morning and we got to experience a lot of men who were making their step their life choice to priesthood and that was a really um, encouraging thing and then we went to visit the women who were making the same religious vocation but as sisters as sisters of Mary mother of the Eucharist and that was very encouraging as well um, that March literally changed my life um, through all the witness talks, there's witness talks of, um, we even had a witness talk of Steven Tyler's girlfriend who spoke about how um, he basically forced her to have an abortion. It was an amazing talk and it changed, it literally changed my life. Um, and you just, being there and saw, you can see that you're not alone and seeing so many youth there my age, it's, like, yes, we are the pro-life generation and it's gonna change. Uh, the second March for Life was very similar, pretty much the same. We did a lot of the same things. Didn't get to go to the Stand True Rally, but it was, um, the, being at the Basilica was more powerful this time. Um, we, I got to be in the upstairs of the main sanctuary instead of being downstairs. And so that was a new experience and uh, my friend and I, we were sitting next to each other. She's from Ukraine, and uh, it was this her first time being to D.C., her first time being in a march like this. They, in Ukraine, they, um, abortion isn't legalized. So it was a whole different experience for her, and it was very interesting, just the multicultural um, pro-life across the world. And so we, um, we prayed the Chapel of St. Philomena together, uh, and she's a patron saint of like young women who, um, virgins, students, and then we prayed the rosary as well. And so that was more powerful that time. And then the next morning we went to a rally at the Armory, um, very similar to the one of Verizon Center, but it was cool because my senior was there and Bishop Sample and Father Ryan, so the Marquette community was represented. And then we took a bus to the march and it was pretty much the same thing, lots of chanting. Beautiful, uh, there's, I remember there's this one, I have a picture of it, people are carrying this uh, huge crucifix, 
and the carving of the wood was just gorgeous. It was really intricate and you could see his pain for us, but how he died for all of us was really, really powerful. Um, so coming back from the March for Life, you need to, that's only one day a year. So it's very important that we keep this going. And there's so many different ways that we can do it. And everybody can do all these different uh, things. And some of the few of, that I've done is a silent, one of them is a silent day of solidarity. And that's where I'm silent for a whole day at school um, and basically um, bringing awareness of how there's so many children whose voices are forever silent and we are remembering them that day and giving witness to people who maybe don't know all the horrors of abortion. And doing that in school is hard because you, there's, you know, there's not very many there um, the first year. This year I tried to get a lot more people to do it. So we had about 20 people at the high school um, doing it this year. And there's a lot of people who knew about it and were talking about it. It was a really good thing. And that's not only for high schoolers and youth. Everybody can do it um, in your workplace, even at home. You can just pray. Um, it's just really powerful. And like it helps you feel like the aborted child is inside you because you can't. You have to be silent just like they are. Um, we've also, I've also done the praying outside of Planned Parenthood, the 40 Days for Life, where we pray the rosary and the Divine Mercy Chaplet outside of Planned Parenthood, and that's a very interesting experience. It's really powerful as well. Um, you, you're praying and you're out there for all the public to see, and it's different from the March for Life because you're actually gonna see people that you know who maybe have different views than you, but it's really important that you show how you, what you believe and educate people, and this is one way to do it. Um, I've, in the gathering space, we just finished up the praying for the, we had an unborn baby or babies that we prayed for for nine months, and you could give them a name. And so I named mine this year, um, uh, David, George, and Charlotte Immaculata. And so that was really, really cool. And at the end, it's, very amazing because you like you prayed for them the whole time, and there's also the Walk for Life in Marquette that the Care Clinic sponsors, and that's uh, another very similar, like another demonstration like the March for Life in Marquette. Um, I've hosted stuff tables at the Care Clinic banquet this year, and hearing Abby Johnson's talk was another life changing moment, and. There's volunteer opportunities at the care clinic that pe anybody can do, donating baby food, baby clothes, diapers, things for the mothers, things for the fathers, anything they can use. Uh, and then one really, um, something that you can do with the media that's really important because everybody will see it is, um, I, I only have a Facebook, but you can, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, um, posting pro-life messages or um, specific pictures is very, very important to do because people will see it when they're scrolling through their news feed or something. And it's just getting the word out there, putting the thought in their heads, and that's so important. Um, one interesting story at school, um, we had to, in my English class, we had to get a piece of like persuasive bulletin, um, like a billboard or something, and we had to explain like the rhetorical use of it. And so I, and then we had we would have to like write a little analysis about it, and we would have to go into small groups and share it with the class, or share with our small group. And um, I didn't know this, but we each group was going to pick somebody to share in front of the whole class. And so I picked this one little um, billboard, or saying that it had. A, unborn baby and it said pretend I'm a tree and save me on it and so my group chose me to share it with the whole class and so um, it was that just as God was just using me to um, proclaim his word and 
um, <clears throat> just things like that. God is with you all the time, no matter what, uh, with the pro-life movement. And little instances like that are wonderful opportunities. So you guys can do the same things. Um, praying is the most important thing to do. And, but kindly witnessing to people, um, being encouraging and positive is the best way, especially, I mean, I've experienced that with my peers. Um, not condemning, but being encouraging and respecting them, but you have to be careful not to say, oh, it's okay, but you just need to say, no, it's wrong, and this is why. Um, it's very important to do that. So, even though we're not at the March for Life right now, we're there in spirit, and we can do, take the spirit from the March for Life and integrate it into our everyday lives today. Thank you.